Oh, I say, there's a pigeon cooing at me. Why is there a pigeon cooing at me? Because I'm here on the table again, and there's a pigeon in the background, and we focus down a bit more, because today we've gone to a car boot sale. Mmm, sale. And at that car boot sale, I've brought a load of crap, as I normally do. Now, if you don't know what a car boot sale is, it's basically a large field, normally, or an inside area, where a bunch of people get a load of crap and put it in their boots, and they go and they sell it, and other people like me buy it. And then they do hand motions in front of the camera to indicate that they exist entirely, and that this is a very, very serious video. Now, obviously, with a car boot sale, you have a very good chance of not finding anything that you actually want. And you may just find a load of toss. And normally, I find a load of toss that I don't actually want. Uh, I don't actually ever buy much at car boot sales. That's enough of that. Ugh, I only brought these to annoy the pigeon. Uh, I don't actually normally buy much at car boot sales. Um, and I don't get to go to them very often because I can't transport myself there. I know, I'm a bus driver who doesn't drive. Um, but uh, today is different. As we have my classical bag and another bag full of crap that I've brought from the car boot sale, which we're now going to look at. Now, I've got a general selection of bits and pieces that I always sort of buy. Oh, I say that's given away the game, hasn't it? Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to pull bits and pieces out. We're going to look at them and then uh, I'm going to add them to my collection and wonder why the hell I brought most of this stuff. Uh, and I'll tell you roughly how much I paid for everything as well, just to give you an idea of pricing. But as you've already seen, the first thing that I acquired, and it was the first thing I brought. Oh dear. Oh, cables. Cables, cables, cables. Should have thought this one through a bit better. <laughs> Is this. It's the Academy D5614 video game. Play with colour slash black and white television set. Uh, and to those of you who know, it's got an open button. These are basically very, very early. Um, oh, bollocks, just broke that. Very, very early television game sets. And um, basically, they'd have a selection of Pong based games, in this case, hockey, squash, handball, and tennis. And you control them with the paddle like Pong. Uh, I'm told this one works. I paid a whole £15 for it, which isn't bad. That's about what the going right is on one of these. I actually had a much nicer one at one point that uh, had its box, but this one does not. So you select the game by slipping here, and it basically just changes the background and what the uh, the POC on does. Power on and off. The angle. Probably, I don't know. Speed. Serve. We've got a button for serving. Listen to that click. And the bat size. Small and large. Plus scoring systems. Very, very basic thing. Um, warning, to prevent fire or shock hazard, do not expose this appliance to rain or moisture. Do not remove cover. No use to use the serviceable parts inside. Refer servicing to qualified service personnel. Made in Hong Kong. Mmm. <laughs> Excuse me. UHF CH30 CCIR system. External power. Yes, I've got the adapter. We're going to use that. It would also take... Um, a selection of, I think they're D, they're D or C cells. Basically, big bloody batteries, which I also have some of. Um, but obviously, I can't do this in any way. I no way I could definitely play this. Right, that's that. So I don't want this, I want that. This needs to be unplugged, and this needs to be plugged in here. This needs to be plugged in here. Okay, so this is going in through the aerial into here, so if I plug this into here, no noise. So if I plug this into here, as thus, when I turn this on with power, it should plug and say, but it does not. Now, that's most likely because this appears to be a little knackered. 
So, good lord. Yes, so let's get batteries. Well, that's definitely made a noise. So let's just put that on. So, there is no output. Now let me see if I can tune anything in on channel three, uh, which is ITV. So this TV is great, you literally just, aha, there we go. <laughs> now this um, right here is a problem with the television slash the tuning of it, um, more than the game system itself, as far as I can tell. Uh, it means that I'm gonna have to get the damn thing fixed again, although it's already been built up from one. Everything is very carefully tuned, I can give you that for nothing. So this requires a different tuning in the Super Nintendo as well, but, there we go. So as you can see, that's really, really not how. Yeah, so what we've got hockey at the moment, so if I serve, yeah, they, they... <laughs> yes, so basically on the right hand side, this panel controls both this player and this player. And obviously it's the same on the other. So if I hit serve, then uh, there's the ball. <laughs> this is much more difficult than it looks uh, to play by yourself. Yes, and so you get the idea, and if we uh, speed up to fast, the ball obviously moves faster, we can reset the game. What are these angles? Don't know what the angle does. Oh, just turned it off. Listen to that noise. That's, uh, I think that's meant to be the crowd and the audience, so we serve. <coughs> oh dear. Obviously we could have auto serve, which just serves for you. And we can have a small and large bat, so we can make the game more difficult. Don't know what this is. I think this is just a general scoring from when you haven't got one at the top. So let's move to squash. So as you can see, uh, here is the ball. So we're gonna serve, nope. Okay, we're gonna move it to slow, low speed, and we're gonna serve. Oh gosh, serve. How do you know when it's... So, okay, so it's this guy now. Okay, and now it's him. Yep, and so we're playing squash. This is definitely squash from probably the, somewhere in the 70s. That pad was a bit funny. Wow, look at that. Oh, oh, he's lost. Oh, dear. <laughs> let's, uh, let's change these back to large. And now we're going on to practice, which uh, it just appears to be one player. So if I serve the ball, I am just practicing. Mmm, God, kids in the 70s, or adults actually, because these were marketed to adults as much as they were children, were really spoiled for their video games, weren't they? I have no idea if this is turning out any good on that camera either. I'm going to look back at the footage and go, blah. And finally, tennis, which as we all know is Pong. Yes. God, this panel on the left is really, really quite funny. Uh, much more so than it should be. It feels funny as well. But on the plus side, it does work. So yes, that's that. That's actually a very first goodbye, unless it didn't work, because I'm recording this bit after uh, the televised bit. So if it didn't work, then no, this is the bad one, and it's going in the bin. Although I had the feeling it worked. I don't know, but that was a good thing. Let's put that over there. Oh, I paid £15 for that, which I said is about the going rate. Right, we've got these now. A bag. What's in the bag? Ooh, three for a pound these were, and these are the only ones that I wanted out of that particular setup. Of course, it's some toy cars. Here we go.
We've got a patrol, rescue, hot wheels. The interior and the glass, oh, the glass, the plastic is actually quite nice. The body works nice and the wheels are nice. Uh, minus that little bend down there. Thailand, 1990. Predictable there, nice 1991. We've got a slightly newer Jaguar, it looked like a D-type. Um, this was a racing car they made, but didn't really. They made about 10 of them, if that. It was the right way around the first time, wasn't it? Well done, Ekrom. A Jaguar D-type, I was right, from 1997. And the thing that drew my attention the most, this caravan, which even, oh, there's knocking the camera, has its walking door. It's a Caravan 2000, really nice condition, hook and all. It's a Matchbox Super Kings from 1977. That's really nice, and I don't have many towable objects, so I'm quite pleased to have another one, especially one that actually has its door functioning working, which I didn't notice at first. So yeah, that's really nice, and altogether they cost about 33 pence each, which is the joy of car boot sales, because you can spend a lot, you can spend a little. I spent a little on this, he cost 10 pence. Um, I cannot remember where I remember these from, but I know I used to have some as a kid. Um, freaky little alien dude with, well, he's not, he's got a big, he's got a big thumb, really. He's got a thing on the back. They were from a set. I can't remember what they are, but he cost a whole 10 pence. It was worth it. Um, electrical tag ties. You know, electrical tag ties are always useful. Ah, put those over there for now. Uh, oh, that's, uh, that's what I carry my money around in. Change, 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 a change. What's in here? Oh, that's more electrical tag ties. Whoopsie daisy, they can go over there. Uh, actually, we're almost already through this bag. That's a blue bag I didn't use. Right, there's some more. Let's just kind of empty everything out of the bag. That's, I don't know what that is. It looks like a receipt. Right, that's what's left in this bag. We're almost through this already, and we're only five minutes in. Good Lord. Well, I said well, it's going to be longer, isn't it? Of course it is. So that's your power supply for um, the TV brick thing. Uh, probably that one. Uh, very, very, hmm, yeah, I, I've already done this, obviously, by the time this comes up in the video, but have I done it? Goodness knows. More toy cars. Now, I brought this one separately, uh, because obviously it's a bus. It's an old Lesney bus. Paid three pounds for it, which is more than I would normally pay for any kind of car, but I don't have one of these coaches. Uh, just notice that that front axle is completely buggered. There's no, pretty much no spin there. That's a shame. Yeah, this is more than I would normally pay, but I don't have one of these coaches, so obviously that's going on the shelf. It's very similar to their, um, when they did it with the super fast wheels as well, just instead it had, you know, two wheels and three. But it cost three pounds. The next in comparison of the way car boot sales go is this. I found this in a box full of mostly kids' toys. In fact, I found him in the same box. And this one is, you know, it's a Lesney again, it's quite nice, Made in England Matchbox series. You know, the stick is there, it's gone, but it's there. The paint's not terrible, it's BP. 10 pence, 10 pence. It's good for 10 pence, so like I saw that and it's like, I'm buying this regardless. So that was good, um, I brought these two together. Uh, you've got your typical Matchbox, um, Matchbox Leyland bus, 1981. Now, obviously, I've already got one of these, but my one is quite a bit more beaten up than this one, paintwork-wise, which is why I've got this one for display. So that's nice. And this nice Rover from Corgi. I brought it because the boot opens and the wheels still turn. It is literally just a Corgi, made in Ridden, Rover 3500. Uh, and actually, when I said how much for them, he told me to take them for free. Uh, now, I insisted on giving him money, so I gave him 50 pence for each car, which is about the going rate for uh, toy cars at car boot sales. Um, but he said he brought the whole lot in a job lot years ago and was just trying to get rid of them. So, you know, pound for those two. And then there's this. Uh, actually, we'll go to those in a minute because I'm being critical. Let's just quickly go through the bag. So I've got another bag down here, which has two objects in it. Um, here's one. Canna WD-40. Motor use product. Incredibly useful. It's basically, if you don't know what it is, it's a lubricant used for lubricating things. And I have just uh, used it to fix my front door, which was being really dodgy with its key. So £5 on that. Really good. I said 50 pence on those. Now, I actually lied. I've got three things in here. Oh, I just dropped one. There. That was about a multi-tool with a fake wooden effect on. It's got a little container as well. This is for work. I'm going to carry this around for work because you never know when you might need an old tool. Quite a big, hefty, chunky thing. You know, it's... Uh, Got a basic spring load. It's, uh, it's got a torch. Now, does the torch work? It's uh, it's got batteries in it. I've just dropped it. It's hard, so I've screwed it the wrong way. But if I screw it this way, 
Does it work? No, it doesn't. But hey, it was three pounds, so who gives a toss? If you replace the batteries, it'll probably work. And of course, it's got all your standard sort of multi tools. It's got a Phillips head screwdriver. It's not a Phillips head, it's a flat head. It's got a pointed, it's got a knife I've just cut myself on, and a bottle opener. And it's got a knife, you know, all the standard stuff you find on a multi tool. Three pounds. You know, it's not bad. It will go into my work case. I'll use that for when things are broken and I think I can fix them and then I break them worse and don't tell anybody that I broke them. Yay. Um, and the last object in this particular bag, not including the tins of drink that I've had, is uh, it's, 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 it's this. Yeah, uh, it's a home leisure seahorse rider. Now, why the hell have I brought this? Well, one of the things I collect, which I haven't done on YouTube and probably will not do on YouTube outside of things like this when I'm buying them randomly, is I collect pool toys. Um, I have collected them for years and years. I've got over 130 of the buggers um, and I haven't seen one of these for years. Um, they came around, God, about the time that the Intex ones came around, I think, sort of 2012, 2010-ish. Um, as a natural knockoff brand of them, uh, there were loads of them, and then as these things are, they completely disappeared because nobody really brought them, and then they weren't available anymore, so to find one in box is actually quite nice. Quite pleased with that, and that cost me a whole three pounds, which is a good price for one of those. I could sell that on for a lot more. And then we get to these. Guess what? I collect pin badges. Only started recently, and I've already got a massive cork board full. There's ten in here, and I spent a pound on them each. So, oh no, there's twelve in here, actually. Actually, I'll explain that in a second. But first, we start with a nice little kingfisher because birds are nice. It's got those rubberized backing as well, so I never know what to think about these rubberized backings, personally. I don't like them so much, but uh, I can see the benefit. Oh, and it's also got a... Uh... Oh, it's head. Hmm. Oh, bins. But yes, nice little, you know, kingfisher there. Nothing wrong with that. Got an owl flying through the sky. I never wear any of these, instantly. They all go on the pin. Um, got a pair of parrots, you know, same bird, different colouring, but I thought they were quite nice. You know, they were nice enough for me to justify picking them both up. We've got a Matilda. Yes, it's a Matilda too. It's a tank with the label Scorpion on it. So I don't know what that's referencing, but it's definitely that. Uh, I think this is a lorikeet of some kind. Um, it's a bird. I like birds. I have a lot of birds, unsurprisingly. Uh, it's, uh, oh god, what was this? This was, um, oh, it's one of the Crusader tanks. Oh, wait, what's that written on it on there? Challenger. Oh, is this a Challenger tank then? Sod knows. I thought it was a Crusader. Uh, it's certainly got that look to it. Goodness knows, but it's a tank and it was something different. We'll do that one and the other one. Those two last, because I brought them from separate sellers. Look at that. It's a little crow. Hello, crow boy. Are you enjoying yourself? Good, you're gonna get stuck on a cork board and no one's ever gonna see you again. And look, it's like a magpie. I like magpies. Magpies are awesome. One of my co-workers had a magpie fledgling fall out the nest recently. Unfortunately, I was away, so I couldn't pick it up. Otherwise, we'd now have a magpie and a pigeon. Hmm, bad. And a T-Rex, because dude doesn't like T-Rexes, even though I don't actually like them very much. Gallimimus are so much better. So they're the ones that I spent £10 on, a pound each. These next two cost 50 pence each from a different seller. Uh, it's Dennis the Menace. But it's your very much 1980s-esque Dennis the Menace, 1980s, 1990s, with the very kind of fluffed up hair. Um, in fact, actually, what's that? Is that written on the back? Is this part of the fan club? This might actually be part of the fan club. I'm just going to kind of bring this to my face to have a look. C.C. Thompson and Company Limited is what it says on the back. There's no date. This might actually be from the fan club, which will put it in the 90s. Uh, I'm going to see if I can clean it up a bit because it's got a little bit of crud on it. In fact, actually, that's just scraping off of my thumb, so that's good. And this is the other thing that interested me. It is the Special Olympic Games from Leicester 89. That's just interesting. This was a year after I was born. So I've also got this interesting pin back, which I've never seen one of these before. Um... But it does appear that you just got twisted off. Yeah, yeah, it seems to be uh, an early version of, because we have these now where you can pull them, they're locking. It seems to be an early version of those. But yes, this is from Ring Golf Promotions, and there's a telephone number you probably shouldn't ring. But yeah, no, that interested me. Don't know why, but it did. But yes, that's what I ended up picking up at the car boot sale. Um, good things. I actually really enjoyed this. This is probably one of my favorite things, though, just because. It's immaculate, genuinely pleased. Uh, if this worked, it's great. If it didn't work, it's trash. 
damn it. That was obviously a very good buy for 10 pence. Uh, I wouldn't pay three pounds for another one of these unless it was in excellent condition, but I didn't have one, so that's going on the shelf. Um, yeah, I don't have one of those. I've got the other variants, but not that one. That's fine. Pins are great. Love that. Quite like the D-Type. It was a very underrated car. They did not make many of them. In fact, I only found of his existence through Test Drive Unlimited 2. Like that, you know, earlier Hot Wheels. This stuff is just useful to have around. And the pin badges are great. So, yeah, a very good haul from the car boot sale. I spent way too much money. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so I can get enough subscribers to do that whole monetization thing so I can make 30 pence back from these videos and be poor. And I'm trying to get rid of shit as well.